Zootopia is an oh-so-phenomenal movie, with its relatable detective work, its great animation, and its eerily silent lambs who implore alleged cannibalism, but lying underneath the surface of Zootopia are many conspiracies. There's the obvious symbolism of racism and how it's terrible, then there's the lingering questions of how birds and fish seem to be non-existent in this film, and according to Matthew Patrick, the night howlers show strikingly similar effects to cocaine, but today I'm going to to take a look at something else. I'm gonna figure out exactly what flower night howlers are most similar to in real life, but the consequences that come with that put Assistant Mayor Don Bellwether in a whole new sociopathic light. Hello, I'm The Theorizer, and do you know what I haven't done in a very long time? Something scientific. And I'm not talking about physics and math, I'm talking about biology and psychology and genetics. But that's not what we're doing today, well, not quite. Because today we're figuring out what night howlers truly are. For those of you who don't know what night howlers are, are, it means you haven't watched the movie Zootopia. You should watch that now. I believe it's on Netflix, so there's a start. It's a really good movie about a bunny who wants to be a cop, but nobody thinks she's good enough. It takes place in a city full of animals, and predators are going savage, so the bunny finds out that a certain flower is behind it. When the predators go savage, their eyes change color and they start attacking anything that moves. According to some brain scans the movie shows, the cerebellum loses activity, causing the higher thinking that these mammals have to cease to exist, causing primitive instincts to take over. Which leaves the obvious question, what kind of flowers are night howlers, and what does this say about Dawn Bellwether? So this shouldn't be too difficult. It's best that we start by comparing the appearance of the flower to other flowers that actually exist. According to the film, night howlers appear as purple flowers with six circular petals around them, and multiple inner yellow pistils. Later in their lifespan, they may get a bunch of mini stems branching off of the main stem, and according to Judy's dad, the night howlers have a technical name, but when you break it down it basically just says that it's used as a poison to keep away insects from other crops. Judy says that night howlers are a part of, or are based on, crocuses. Cool. So now we just have to look through all kinds of crocuses until we find the most visually identical flower. So almost immediately after doing a quick search, we find Crocus vernus, otherwise known as the Spring Crocus. In many pictures, the similarities are striking. Despite night howlers being slightly darker and with a couple of spots on them, they have the exact same size, shape, and petal count. And they have the exact same colors on both petals and pistils. Doing some more research, we find that crocuses use corms, which are sort of like bulbs. Many flowers don't use bulbs or corms, so the fact that night howlers use bulbs and corms are similar to them narrow things down even further. Corcuses require full sun and some shade in order to grow. They grow quite fast in the sun, but they'll eventually fade and die if the sun becomes too much for them. Which makes the usage of a controlled environment ideal. And looky here, Dawn Bellwether used a controlled environment to grow the flowers. She even followed many of the steps I looked up for planting them. And they may grow in spring, but as I said, this is a controlled environment. She can breed and change them however she wants. So boom, we're already done. Wow, that was easy. But wait, there's a catch. If you plant a bunch of spring crocuses around your garden, rabbits and rats will start eating them, and they'll only go away with a stomach ache and perhaps some vomiting. No insanity, no drooling, and no extreme aggravation. So is my theory already busted, just like that? No. It isn't. You see, there's a second candidate for Night Howlers which also looks strikingly similar, grows in the exact same way, and follows most of our criteria. I'm referring to the Autumn Crocuses, one of the most infamously deceiving poisonous flowers in the world. It looks fragile and soft, but ingesting it will cause similar effects to taking a bunch of arsenic. You'll vomit, have diarrhea, lose your appetite, your kidneys and liver will stop working. You'll break down your organs, damage your breathing, have heart attacks, drool and salivate uncontrollably, burn your mouth and throat, and most importantly, there are some neurological effects. But if you ingest enough and leave it 
it untreated, you'll actually die. The neurological effects include convulsing and throwing your muscles around uncontrollably. It also includes having seizures, slipping in and out of consciousness, and getting totally dizzy. It is my belief that the Night Howler is a slightly altered variation of the Autumn Crocus, a variation which targets the brain over all other organs, causing animals to get dizzy, slip from consciousness, and slip into their primitive instincts where they freak out from the toxins in their brain and the extremely torturous internal symptoms. And according to modern day florists and scientists, there is no cure. Well, that's not what they say in the movie. At the end, they say that they found a cure, and that all of the affected animals are now being treated. But there's something here that's been left unchecked. Judy's mom says that when she was a little girl, her brother ate an entire night howler, and then bit her and went savage. And based off of their conversation, we know that he was fine in the end. Yet, there was never a cure before, so then, how did he get back to normal? Well, like most poisons, usually it'll eventually pass through your body and you'll be fine. And that makes sense for Judy's uncle Terry, but then that means the antidote they talk about in the movie wasn't even needed. The doctors would know that it would automatically flush from their systems. Perhaps it's just some of their future technology, but I'm fairly certain that the antidote is just a chemical that speeds up the process and pushes the poison out of their bodies faster. But all of this means something when you look at what Mayor Bellwether is doing. She's trying to make the poison even more insane than it already is. She has her team of lambs trying to chemically make them more... more something, perhaps more longer lasting? She's creating the ultimate crocus poison, one which will make predators go permanently insane, but keep them from dying. The ultimate torture. The fact that she keeps the neurotoxin in small balls means that the animals are getting it in very little doses which would prevent them from dying, but keep them in some of the greatest internal pain possible, making them lose control, lash out while semi-conscious, and making their jaw muscles fail, causing drooling. Everything matches up with the Autumn Crocuses, and it means Mare Bellwether is far more sinister and wicked than we ever assumed before. She says she'll keep ingesting predators to keep herself in power. I bet she had to keep ingesting the same predators, but by the end of the film, she was on the brink of finding a way to keep them permanently savage. She was keeping them in agony, in extreme internal and psychological pain, which made them unknowingly lash out at everyone and everything. Night Howlers are a variation of the Autumn Crocus. They have to be, based off of the shape, size, coloring, poisonous effects, Uncle Terry, and Bellwether's bizarre posse of poison testers. It has to be the correct answer. It makes me wonder if Dawn Bellwether had some sort of traumatic experience with predators early on in her life. Her symptoms show a lack of empathy towards an entire race, and some extremely dark motives. It can't just be from Lionheart's neglection. She shows outright symptoms of ASPD and other disorders that make the person completely sociopathic and cruel towards everyone and everything. There's something else that went on in her life, who knows? Maybe I'll make a video on her backstory another day. Her family, how she became mayor, all that good stuff. Because there is a lot packed into this movie. Disney has a track record of putting secrets and mysteries in their movies. They do extensive research on so many different topics just to get scientifically accurate. So it makes you wonder just how far they really are willing to go. And something else. Autumn crocuses are native to northwestern Europe. Meaning that if they are this easy to find just anywhere, Zootopia is a movie which takes place in the far, far future, somewhere in either the Netherlands, Germany, or Belgium. That shouldn't come as a surprise, because despite the character accents, the majority of the landscape parallels that of the Alps, and the beautiful lakes and oceans. And the fact that there are no humans either suggests a parallel universe, or it's very far into the future. I don't know. But what I do know is my conclusion. Don Bellwether's poison is actually an altered neurotoxin ripped straight from the Colchicum adamnale, a flower which is so shifty in how it deceives its prey, much like Don herself. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.